In this video, we're going to look at what happens when we start to take several different gases and put them into a mixture. And this is a part of the concept of Dalton's law of partial pressure. So what Dalton's law says is that for a mixture of gases, each gas exerts a pressure independent of the other gases. And this kind of makes sense in terms of what we've been talking about. So if we take PV equals NRT and we reorganize it so that we just get pressure on one side and all the other variables on the other, we get that pressure is equal to nRT over V. So at some given temperature and volume, meaning if we, um, if we take a mixture of gases where all the different gases are in the same container and they're all at the same temperature, which makes sense because if they're all in the same container, then they're, they're, they have to abide by the same volume of that container. And it's unlikely that any one of the gases is gonna have a different temperature. They're all gonna have to have the same temperature since they're together in the same container. So if we kind of hold those variables of temperature and volume constant, what we can say is that the pressure is proportional to the number of moles. And this is kind of fundamental because the number of moles doesn't specify of what, it just specifies the number of moles. So the pressure of O2, for example, is gonna be proportional to the number of moles of O2. And if we were to have inside of our container a mixture of O2 and CO2, well, then the pressure of the CO2 is going to be proportional to the number of moles of CO2. So this, this concept of partial the, the pressure of a gas being proportional to the number of moles comes from our understanding of the empirical gas laws. Then what we can say is that basically we can take all of these various pressures and add them up to get the total pressure. So the pressure of a mixture, or we can also call this P total, is equal to the pressure of A plus the pressure of B plus the pressure of C. And we can also say that the number of moles total is gonna equal the number of moles of A plus the number of moles of B plus the number of moles of C. And so these two concepts, that the, the pressure being equivalent and the number of moles being equivalent, is gonna allow us to derive an equation for partial pressure that's going to allow us to look at pressure in the context of the number of moles of a specific gas relative to the number of moles of gas total. So let's say that we want to determine the fraction of a gas A relative to the total number of moles of gas. So we have our mixture here of, let's say, O2 and CO2. Um, we have our number of moles of O2 plus our number of moles of CO2. That's going to equal our total number of moles. And we have our pressure of O2 plus our pressure of CO2, and that's going to equal our total pressure. So we know those things already from Dalton's law. Let's say that we want to come up with what the fraction of gas A relative to the total fraction would look like. So what we can do is we can write, and we know that P is equal to nRT over V. So what we could say is, well, we could take the P of, of the gas, and this is going to equal the N of A times RT over V. And then we can divide both sides by the total, because we want to get the fraction. So we want to get the fraction of A relative to the total fraction. So this is going to equal the N total um, times RT over V. Now, because R, T, and V are constants here. Since these gas share the same container, they therefore have the same volume and they therefore have the same temperature. The R, T, and V go away. And what we get is we get that the P, A over P, T is equal to the number of moles of A over the number of moles total. And let's just take an example to kind of make this make more sense. Um, so what this is basically saying is that the fraction of the number of moles will determine the fraction of the pressure. So if you have 50% CO2 and you have 50% O2 in your mixture, what this is saying is that 50% of the pressure will be from CO2 and 50% of the pressure will be from O2. So I think, I think from a very simple example like that, that kind of starts to make sense, right? Because if you have half of your number of moles being CO2 and half your number of moles being O2, then half your pressure is going to be from CO2 and half your pressure is going to be from O2. 
So we can actually summarize this thing as what we call a mole fraction. And mole fraction can be written as a symbol called chi, or this fancy x. So we can say that chi of a, or the mole fraction of a, is equal to the number of moles of a divided by the total number of moles. So then what we can come up with is we can come up with an equation that looks like this. If we have the p of a over p total is equal to the mole fraction of a, because remember over here on this side, this is the number of moles of a over the number of moles total, we can say that the p of a is equal to the moles of a times the total, the mole fraction of a times the total pressure. So now let's look at this in terms of our example. So we said, okay, we have 50% O2 and we have 50% CO2. And we know that the pressure of O2 is gonna be 50% of the total pressure and the pressure of CO2 is gonna be 50% of the total pressure. So in this case, let's say that our total pressure is equal to one atmosphere. I think you guys can do this pretty simply and say, well, if 50% of my gas is O2, and that's gonna represent half the pressure, then the pressure of O2 is equal to 0.5 atm. And the pressure of CO2 is gonna equal 0.5 atm. Now, if we wanna do it in terms of this equation, what we could say is, well, let's look at the P of O2 in this case. Well, the P of O2 is gonna equal the mole fraction of O2, and the mole fraction in this case is gonna be 0.5 moles over a total of one mole. That would be 50%. So let's say that we have a total number of moles, just as an example. It could be anything, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just to make things nice and round, our total number of moles is gonna be one mole. So that means that we have 0.5 moles of O2 and 0.5 moles of CO2. So we take our 0.5 moles over one mole times the total pressure, which is one ATM, and we get our 0.5 ATM. So that's what I'm getting at. So you kind of can see it in the empirical example over here, and then this is the computed example over here. So we come out with three main equations. We have equation one, which we said, and this is the easy one. So the N of A plus the N of B plus the N of C. So all of the different components will add up to give us the number of moles total. So the number of moles add of each gas combined to give us the total number of moles. And we have our second equa equation. Because the number of moles are, is proportional to the pressure, we can say that the pressure of A plus the pressure of B plus the pressure of C is equal to the total pressure. And then we have our third equation, that if the above two are true, then what we can say is, well, the pressure of a given component is equal to the mole fraction of that component times the total pressure, where the mole fraction of A is equal to the number of moles of A over the total number of moles. So these are the three equations that go along with Dalton. So just to make it clear, what we, can, what we call this uh, P of sub A, this is actually what we call a partial pressure. So you may see this um, in a question, for example. So it might say the partial pressure of oxygen. What that means is that there's a, um, in a mixture of gases, the partial pressure of a gas is the partial, it would be the pressure of one of the components. I just wanted to point that out so that, that that was clear, that the P sub A is also called a partial pressure. Let's take a look at lecture problem four, and this is some examples of Dalton's law. So this one says, an atmosphere on Titan, one of Mars moons, has a pressure of 1.605 atmospheres. Uh, and is composed of 82% nitrogen, 12% argon, and 6 mole percent methane. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas. Okay, so we basically have an atmosphere, that's our container, and it's got some nitrogen, some argon, and some methane in it. And we want to get what the, the pressure of each individual gas is. Well, to do that, if we want to get the pressure of nitrogen, that's gonna equal the mole fraction of nitrogen times the total pressure. So in this case, if it's 82%, then we're gonna take 0.82, because remember, a percent is out, out of 100, and a fraction is out of one. So we, take, we convert our percent to a fraction, which is 0.82, and then we multiply it by the total pressure, which is 1.605 atmospheres. And we get 1.32 atm. 
And you could do the same thing for the argon, which is going to equal the mole fraction of argon times the total pressure. So in this case, that would be 0 0.12 times 1.605 atmospheres is equal to 0 0.193 atm. Okay, so that, that gives you an idea of how to do the partial pressure, and that's pretty simple. And for the methane, the methane you would do uh, 0 0.06 times the 1.605. And you'll notice that if, in the end, so if you were to do that, you would get 0 0.0963 atm. If you were to add these up, you get back your 1.605 atm. So this shows you that all three components have to add back up to the total. So that just that's just kind of a, a bit of a, a thing that you should a way to check yourself to make sure that everything is working out correctly. Let's look at the second one. So the second one says that a 10 liter flask contains a mixture of 1.031 grams of O2 and 0.572 grams of CO2 at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas and the total pressure. So this one's a little tougher because what we have to do is they give us the mass in grams for these and we want to get the total pressure. So, and we want to get the partial pressure and the total pressure. So to get the partial pressure of each gas, we need to get the number of moles. And once we have the number of moles, we can then calculate a pressure. Because remember, in this case, PV equals NRT. So if we want to get the pressure, we can get, we can get that from NRT over V. So if we have the number of moles, the temperature, and the volume, we can get the pressure of each individual gas. And the reason why I know this is because, like we said, it, it doesn't matter. Each individual gas is doing its own thing. So I can calculate PV equals NRT for each of these individual gases to get the individual pressures and then add them up to get the total pressure. So let's start doing that. So the first thing I have to do is I have to get the number of moles because I can't put a mass in here. So to get the number of moles, I have to take 1.031 grams and I divide by the molecular weight of oxygen, which is 32 grams per mole. And this gives me 0 0.03222 grams, uh, sorry, 0 0.33322 moles of O2. And for the CO2, I get 0 0.572 grams and then I divide that by 44 grams for every one mole and so this is going to equal 0 0.013 moles of CO2. Okay so now that I have the moles I can calculate uh, the pressure by taking the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the number of moles, I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.0821 uh, liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin and then I'm going to multiply that by the temperature so I have to convert my minus 18 degrees Celsius to um, Kelvin and I'm going to do that so I'm going to take minus 18 plus 273.15 and then I'm going to divide this entire thing by the pressure I'm sorry by the volume which is a 10 liter flask and for the O2 I'm going to get 0 0.0675 atmospheres and then I'm going to do the same thing for the CO2. I get 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin times minus 18 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. I divide that by 10.0 liters and for this I get uh, 0 0.0272 atmospheres. Let's just do a quick check. So this makes sense because I have more moles of O2 than I have moles of CO2. So I should have more pressure of O2 than I have CO2, and that checks out. So that sounds good. And if I want to get the total pressure, I can add up the individual pressures and get the total pressure. So the total pressure in this case is going to be the sum of the two, which is 0 0.0947 atm.